Welcome back to Black News Tonight. My next guest is known across the world as M'Baku from the game-changing blockbuster movie Black Panther. The multidimensional actor Winston Duke this time is tapping into deeper questions, existential questions. And you are being considered for the amazing opportunity of life. If after this process you are selected, you will have the chance to be born in a fruitful environment where you can grow, develop, and accomplish. Would you like to be considered for this position? I would. Duke's character, Will, is a gatekeeper in a different realm where he selects only one new soul among a variety of candidates to be sent to the world. After nine days of testing, the film is a poignant contemplation on the meaning of life. It's really deep and beautiful. And I sat down with Winston Duke to discuss his role as well as the larger implication of nine lives. Winston Duke, it's so good to see you, my brother. <laughs> good to be here, good to be here. Talk to me about this project. You have made not just a brilliant film, but the kind of film that keeps people thinking and contemplating and wrestling with stuff two and three days later. What was the idea behind it? So the idea behind it, the premise, short and sweet, is of a man in the afterlife tasked with the job of interviewing spirits for the opportunity to be born. And the interview process takes place over nine days, which is why it's called Nine Days. It was inspired by the director's uncle that suicided at the age of 50. And, you know, the family would never talk about this uncle. All they would say is, don't be like your uncle. Your uncle was weak. So it was an opportunity for the director to rewrite the narrative of his uncle. His uncle's life was just reduced to this one act, this one moment. So this was an opportunity for him to rewrite the narrative of his uncle and place him in an afterlife situation with this job, grappling with some of the pains and things that he didn't really get to work through in life. And that's nine days. How did you get drawn into something like this. I mean, mm. people make money on action films, people like romantic <laughs> comedies, but the idea of doing something that deals with issues of the afterlife, issues of the spirit, why, mm. how, did, how did your brain get attracted to these types of ideas? You know, I when I read a script, I always try to read it both as the actor and as an audience member. And I remembered reading it and I said, where am I after? And I said, wow, mm. that's a really beautiful journey. And what I like is like, I like to climb the mountain, so to speak. I like for the story to end up someplace completely different than where it started. And for the journey in between to be really interesting. And even though, like you said, people are drawn to action movies, thriller movies, heist movies, chase movies, this movie is an action movie in a sense. It's violent. It's emotionally violent. It's psychologically violent. Mm. And we tend to not view and define violence in those terms unless it's physical. But it's just as potent. It's not an actual chase scene with cars and crashes and explosions. But there is chasing. There is a chase scene. It's people chasing each other emotionally. It's people chasing after each other and going after each other for connection. It is thrilling. It's all wow. these things, but it's a redefinition of all those like classic film tropes. So it's done in an independent film model, but what is so brilliant about it is that it's non-didactic. It doesn't spoon feed you anything. It leaves you with a lot more questions than it does answers. And it is all those things that we're attracted to, but it's a redefinition of all those things, you know? So when I read it, I said, oh man, it's doing all the things I love, but in a whole different way than I ever expected. Does that make you nervous at all? Not from your artistic side, right? Mm -hmm. Which you would love to do art house projects, but from the side where black folk know you as M'Baku. People have seen you in Jordan Peele's <laughs> Us. You, you, you start to make some big projects. People know your, see your face and know that you're doing yeah. special, big, grossing movies. Is there any part of you that says, I, I got to top that, I got to top that, I can't do the small film, even though it's beautiful and brilliant? I think what makes me top anything is the fact that I continue doing the thing that people love. And the thing that people love, no matter if they just 
define it or they believe they understand it as, oh man, M'Baku and the thighs and the break the back and the blah, blah, blah. But what they really tapped into was that Black Panther pushed the boundaries. Black Panther redefined the idea of commercialism and said that you can both be socially impactful and successful. And those are the real things. The top layer is the is the aesthetic. So the real thing that drew people in to all those other really, really big projects is the content. So if I just really focus on the content, it's always going to be impactful. It's always going to be the thing that the people loved, no matter how it's packaged. And that's what Nine Days is. It's, 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 it's that same content of conversation starter. It's pushing boundaries. It's mm. interesting. It's mentally like challenging and respectful because i think it, it you know we're very intellectually respectful we don't we don't infantilize our audience in any kind of way and say this is what this is and this is our definition of it and take it or leave it it's hey we're sharing something what do you think and i think it's that's the thing that allows me to still be really artistically honest and still feel like i can keep topping all the other things that i've done and have people still love it in that way because it's it's my own definition of all those things that people loved and it's me taking control and having a lot of agency within all that stuff you know who who's will who's will who is will i think in a way will is all of us will is a person who's trying to escape their own shadow so i play will's shadow for most of this and then i burst into will's light by the end of the movie and we all try to escape our shadow that part of us that makes us uncomfortable the part of us that feels small the part of us that feels weak the part of us that doesn't feel like we can cope and handle and i think will was dominated by his shadow and i think a lot of us are so in a really great way interesting way potent way will is all of us and that's what's really interesting about, you know, Nine Days is that he feels very, very approachable because you can recognize that side of yourself that wants to, like, self-deprecate. That side of yourself that's given too much emotionally and wants to, like, wall yourself up so it never happens again. That side of yourself that wants to be the capitalist, that wants to be the pragmatist because it's a lot easier to live in numbers than it is in feelings. So that's Will. Wow, that brother is so deep, so indeed brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed what you heard because we have more coming up with Winston Duke. Don't go anywhere. Stay right here. Welcome back to Black News Tonight. We continue my discussion with the actor Winston Duke about his lead role in the new film Nine Days. On this second part, we unpack the diversity of black representation on film and how the COVID lockdown challenged the world to reflect on their own lives. Take a look. One of the things that's interesting to me is the film was shot in July of 2019. It, you know, you're at Sundance, January 2020, no big deal, right? Um, it's the, the, the film is the talk of the town. People are loving it. People are excited about it. I was excited about it. Then COVID hits and mm. It delayed the premiere of this, uh, the, the worldwide distribution of this film, but it also kind of creates an interesting parallel to me, and maybe I'm, I'm overthinking this, but there's no, a way that the kind of isolation and solitude and even desperation at a certain kind of existential level that we have to wrestle with uh, during COVID is also something that we navigate in the film. So has COVID made you think about this film differently? As it, do you think it changes the way we will experience the film? I think COVID directly impacts why this movie is traveling the way it is and impacting and working the way it is. I think people are primed for a movie like Nine Days. In a world where we've just been sequestered for over a year, where we've had to look at each other live through screens like Will, where we've had to, like, lose touch with each other, where we have had to learn to take care of each other from a distance. And distance became our, our, our MO. 
I think people are now way more open to the idea of why these small moments are just as important as the large moments, that the macro is just as important as the micro, that the hand-holding, that the walks on the beach, that going to the sporting event and eating the, the hot dog, that the kiss, that just having that brunch is just as important because it's those small moments that add up to the really big ones. And when you look at that, you look at that parallel, you can understand why the small moments, the small things are just as important as the big in every way. When it comes to voting, when it comes to like your civic duty, the small things that you do, the small mental shifts, the small shifts that you make in your life, the small shifts that you make interpersonally, have really big impact and they add up to really large macro moments. And I think all of that is what makes people feel like they can engage with nine days in such a different way. After a year of protest where one person, because you join the many, can add up to make a really big social impact, that's nine days. And I think everyone's just primed in a different way to look at a movie like this that is saying, hey, more of the same isn't what we're about. And a movie where right. our, our, our theatrical, um, our per theater average was second only to Jungle Cruise, a movie that is a Disney production with the rock in it. I think that says something. You know, I, I think that, that says, says everything, something. everything, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, just, just being in the conversation with The Rock says something. But, I mean, again, this movie is, is, is brilliant, and it speaks to, I hope, a bright future for black Hollywood and for, and for black mm. filmmakers more broadly. I don't want to center Hollywood too much because we can make films without Hollywood. But how, how do you see the current landscape for black artists? I mean, there was a time where we were happy to have one black lead. We were happy to have a, a couple of quote-unquote ethnic films, as USA Today used to call it, you know, like a best man holiday. And now we're seeing more and more diverse casting. We're seeing uh, bigger roles. We're seeing more awards. Uh, is it enough? Are we going to get more? Or, and is that even the right question? Yeah, I think it's all the right question. I think it's the right conversation. Like, you need a lot of questions in a really strong, powerful, meaningful conversation. It's the right questions, but it's not the only ones. You know, I think we have to really celebrate the fact that we're getting a diversity of representation in you know the fact that we're dealing with with black psychology black internal work where a lot of our work now is about the nuance and no longer the idea of the monolith right so it's the idea of the internal and why that's important and that that's stressing to the viewers that that's the work that we have to do i've been saying this for a while now which is that's our job. I think that's our generation's job. The generations that came before us really impacted the landscape. They didn't have the time. They didn't have the resources. They didn't have a lot of the privilege that we had to be able to do the internal work to move forward. They had to, like, survive mm. a landscape that was hostile, a landscape that was unfriendly, that was literally trying to kill them from the outside in. And now... The landscape is a lot more safe. It's not completely safe. The problems aren't solved, but it's a lot more safe for us than it was for our forefathers. And now that means that we can do the work that they couldn't. That ancestral, like, that ancestral work, that ancestral trauma, that internal work that they didn't have the wherewithal, time, space, anything to work on we can now do that and i think we're dealing with that in our art so much more so much differently and so much more directly and it's not that we're now doing it for the first time i think we can just do it a lot more outwardly unapologetically and that's the work and i think that's what's really brilliant and what's really cool and what's exciting about now and what the future is going to look like and hopefully if we do enough of that work the next generation won't have to do that. I think their their new, you know, their new frontier is going to be how blackness and artificial intelligence interact, how blackness and like, you know, a technological landscape interact when we're no longer viewed simply as commodities and just simply as bodies, 
you know, we can celebrate our minds and our spirits as well. I'm really interested in where that's going to go. Hmm. I'm interested in where that goes <clears throat> too. And that kind of creative imagination, that ability and, and desire to move beyond uh, typecasting, to move beyond rigid ideas of what blackness can look like and where mm. blackness can go in terms of how we explore, how we do art, how we create, how we resist, how we dream, how we find joy. Mm. That's, I mean, that's partly the work of the artist and the work you're doing yes. is incredibly central to this new generation of artistry. Well, Winston, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Black News today. Thank you, best of luck, and we're gonna encourage everybody to watch that film because it is a masterpiece. Thank you so much, man. Blessings. Thank you, my brother. Nine Days is in select theaters right now, and it will soon be available on all streaming platforms.